we just think about what's happening in the world today, um, one of one of the things that I, I sort of encourage our students to do is to say, think of, of what's happening in the world from a sociological perspective, and you'll, you'll, you'll be able to see and view this pandemic from very, very different perspectives, not just, um, you know, it's all fear, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, you look at it through a lens that allows you to be critical and allows you to, to consider this pandemic in different ways. And that's one of the reasons why I would um, want to come and study sociology. Um, so we have sort of true pronged approach in our department. The one is sociology and the other one is community development. Um, but before I get to <clears throat> our department and what it is we do, I just want to share with you my area of interest um, and why I am here. Um, similar to Rudy, I joined probably about three years ago. Um, and the, my area of interest is in youth development. Um, so I teach youth development. I've been a practitioner for many years in the field to understand sort of both. Uh, I'm very fortunate in that way that I understand both sort of the academic world and uh, the social world beyond the university. Um, my other interest is uh, research methods, which is my, my field of study. Um, and and I, I also teach research methods. So um, you can see you know, I wear various hats um, at different times. And then uh, my, my interest of research is gender and migration. I have a deep passion for gender issues and particularly uh, uh, women within sort of the um, migration field. So that's a little bit about me and my interest. Mm. So just to give you a little bit of a, an overview of what it is we offer, um, we have three programs um, in our department. So you can study towards a BA in sociology, which is a three year uh, course. Um, uh, we offer both online and contact. And at the moment with the transition from, as many universities have done, transition from um, contact to remote learning has been really very interesting. <clears throat> and I even ask our students to, to consider this very uh, act, to think about this act of moving from contact to remote from a sociological perspective as well. And what that means in the world, what that means to society as we're moving in, in, into the world of the fourth industrial revolution, so to speak. So you can, you can, you can get a BA in, in sociology. Then we have a, a, a um, high certificate in community development. So that, that certificate is aimed at people who are currently working in the field of community development and would like to upskill and get more, a little bit more theoretical um, uh, input into their learning to understand how communities work, how communities uh, uh, evolve. Um, and um, then we have a, a program where we offer that we, where we offer a, a BA honors in community development. So again, it's for people who have a BA already, or so, someone who's wanting to get a a, a, a greater understanding of, of community development and and want to pursue. Um, we have a couple of students that have already. Um, gone beyond the BA in community development and have gone on to do masters in community development. So using this qualification as a stepping stone for further studies. Um, so that in a nutshell is, is, is what we offer. And all our programs are currently offered online um, um, and in the current, our current situation. Um, but if you want to know a little bit more, contact us and ask us a, a number of questions about the more details. I'm, I'm very happy to answer those questions. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you very much, Enrita. So one of the things that's really inspirational for me in, in our social and community development programs is the fact that it's uh, the foundation for us in terms of community engagement development and actual fact the sociological understanding and unpacking of the world to understand the big systems that actually work around and facilitate that. And, but to have that leverage to the actual real life change of people uh, every day. Thank you, Enrietta, for that. I um, appreciate that. So I want to ask Tulani. Tulani Dubey uh, heads up uh, business studies for us. He also has a few other roles, but he actually directs our, uh, our business studies program. So, Tulani, give us a bit of a sense of yourself 
what's your own interest in the field um, and you know what can you expect from from the programs and business study good afternoon uh, thanks Rudy um, so my name is Rudy says is Tulani Dube I'm the faculty manager uh, uh, quality and operations and I head up the business studies department um, I think normally normally we'll say welcome to campus but we're in a time where we we all say welcome to our homes so um, so I'd like to welcome you to my home so what my passion just taking it back I think um, I, I just completed last year I completed my MBA and um, one of my passions besides writing poetry and literature has has always been mentorship especially of the youth so I've, I've always tried to to have someone under my wing if I should if I should say that um, and I'm, I'm of the strong belief that um, by changing one person you it's a ripple effect links streams down to everyone so so at times my target is not just you know mass changing people but just you know changing an individual of one student at a time. Um, I've, been, I've been with Cornerstone for, for close to, to, to five years now. Um, and I've had the privilege of, um, of seeing the, the institution evolve um, and which has also poured into our programs as, as, um, as, as I've, I've been centered in the business studies department and um, when when I came on board, we were running a certificate in um, in uh, business studies and business leadership, which in its conception was was um, was was target really targeted the individual who'd um, studied for something else in terms of a different profession, but was wanted to get empowered to go into management. So, so we made sure that the, the program was built in a way that it offered um, managers skills that, that allowed them to, to kind of transition into that uh, simple uh, modules like, and I don't say simple by, but is isn't simple, but modules like um, uh, financial accounting for, for nine financial managers has always been helpful, you know, for, for people to understand um, the workspace from a monetary perspective. And then you had modules that target actual leadership in terms of um, ensuring you can manage a diverse uh, work group. So what then has happened is with, with uh, obviously with, the, with time, uh, we've, we've introduced a Bachelor of Commerce program. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm very, I'm proud to say being, being at the point where you see its inception and you see its development with time, I'm, I'm very happy to, to see what's happening, especially now. So just before we launched it, I'll just give you a bit of a history, if I may. Just before we launched it, we actually invited a bunch of, um, sorry by saying a bunch, but it was a group of, of business leaders um, for instance, we had Shirley Zen, uh, I think she, she actually facilitated the session of what we wanted our Bachelor of Commerce to look like so that it just did not become just another accredited form of qualification. That's just, this is what it is. So while we focused on, 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 on building on the discipline areas, we, we ran it, we structured it into four majors, um, entrepreneurship, industrial psychology, accounting, and uh, economics. We spoke to the gaps in the economy and spoke to, towards building uh, a sustainable economy, uh, both in the public and in the private sector, in the informal sector and in the formal sector. So um, we, we looked at, um, I remember we even held a session on, on the, the informal, uh, economy on the township economy at the time and how we incorporate it into into what we're doing, which has also trans translated into some of the discussions we've had with um, with the dean in terms of what we what the core modules that now sit in the general education department that speaks to areas of um, of that particular township. Uh, of the township um, of of understanding economics at a 
at an informal level, if, if I may put it that way. So, so we, we really hope that what this does in terms of what, will, what students take away from the qualification is not just walking away with, um, with, with, with subject matter knowledge, but we are trying to build leaders, uh, build community leaders that follow into the values that we've ingrained into these modules, um, considering the background of the organization. So we've always, um, you know, try to go back to the community, tie it into, into um, what's happening in, in, in the economy, which is why we've always had links with, uh, with um, activists um, and, and just hear their views and, and then have it translate. And we've, we've, we, by having these leaders, we, we were actually saying, what do you want graduates to look like? Who would you hire? So that's how we developed these programs, uh, especially with the BCom. So with with notion of time, which is why I say I'm very happy to have to have seen that the program evolves and we're not just stagnant. So with the evolution of time, um, we we're introducing we're in the process of introducing two more two more majors into into that process. So while we're building on what we've already said, this is what we want to be. We've taken into account what's happening in the world. We've taken into account um, the, the fourth industrial revolution knocking on everyone's door and said, um, what, what do we then do that way? So, so currently there's a team um, working on, um, that's um, um, working on, on another stream that's um, a, a streaming software development. Um, which uh, is led by the current chief uh, operating officer. So it's 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 really saying we understand what what what's what's needed in economies, and the transition into into a more tech world has called us to say, look, we need to enter this space. And we've also dealt with uh, an issue that's been um, very, I think, at the heart of the of the. Uh, of the CEOs um, at the heart of the CEO, which has been um, uh, arts management. It's, it's something he's, that's very dear to him. And over the years, we've been talking about this. So it's another stream that will hopefully be coming into the fray in 2021. So, so that's basically the, the business studies department uh, well, yeah. in transitioning. Uh, no, thank you, Tulani. It's it's quite exciting to listen to what, what you're sharing um, because it's clear that in the business studies environment, we're continually growing in terms of what we're presenting and how to respond to, to what the economy requires. So uh, thanks for that. Software development, arts management. Great. Thanks for, thanks for, thanks for putting that up. So um, Geraldine Franciscus uh, is our uh, head of department for psychology um, and as, as actually is, is one of the most senior um, uh, uh, staff members in our faculty leadership team. She's been at Cornerstone for quite some time. Geraldine, uh, who are you? What's your interest in your field? And share something about your department. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I'm so excited that you are part of this discussion today and that you're able to hear about our departments. Like Rudy has said, I'm Geraldine Franciscus, the HOD for the psychology department. I've been with Cornerstone for 19 exciting years. Um, so it gives me great pleasure to talk about the psychology department. I am a psychologist and an academic, and I work with a wonderful team of both academics and practitioners. And we are really interested in promoting mental health and well being. And part of our aims is really to make psychology relevant, practical, and accessible to many more people. And so we take great pride in actually educating and training um, mental health professionals for the future. We have a, um, I have an interest in specifically solution focused brief therapy, as well as brain working recursive therapy, which is a more, which is a newer approach to psychology, which is quite relevant when dealing with post traumatic stress, particularly in our South African context. Um, so I like current approaches that is relevant and is accessible to many more South Africans. 
And I'm quite excited about the prospect of having many more students trained in the area of psychology and counseling. I also belong to CISA, which is the Psychological Society of South Africa. And I currently chair the South African Association of Counseling Psychologists. So that's another area that I'm quite passionate about, um, the broader community being informed about psychology and mental health. We have a, a program, um, let me start off with the first program, the highest certificate in community counseling. It's really an introduction to psychology and counseling. And it's for those who are interested, maybe who work full time and who want to just get to know more about psychology. So we are all about being interested in how people think, feel and behave, what causes people's behavior and understanding those behavior patterns. And so in the certificate program, you'll get to know about these things um, and understand maybe the people and the family members that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And it also gives you access to the degree program once you're done with the higher certificate. We teach in a very interactive and I would say creative way. Um, we use a lot of experiential learning activities. So role plays, case studies, interviews, everything to make psychology more relevant and for you to gain a better understanding. We also have a degree program um, linked to the Bachelor of Arts where we have psychology and counseling majors. So most universities, if you start in a first year program, you'll be with 1,000 to 2,000 students. Our classes are obviously smaller and it allows you for much more one-on-one -on -one interaction with your lecturer as well as with your peers when you're studying psychology. So you're able to ask questions and explore in much more detail in our programs. Um, so we're very excited about that opportunity. Not only do you get an introduction to psychology, but you also get an introduction to counseling, counseling skills, as well as family studies, which is very different to many other universities where you'll get your state psychology. With us, you'll get family studies as well as counseling skills. In that way, we make our psychology also more relevant and more practical. Um, we, also we also have um, a major in the Bachelor of Theology, Community Leadership. So you have two options within the BA program for studying psychology. And then our very exciting postgraduate programs as well. We have a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and we have two tracks there. We have a professional track and we have an academic track. Not that the other one isn't academic, but the one actually leads to registration with the Health Professions Council. And so you can become a registered counselor with the psychology department at Cornerstone Institute after you've completed all the requirements and written a board exam. So both of these programs are quite dynamic with a combination of lectures that are both practical um, practitioners as well as academics. So I look forward to hearing from you and getting a lot more um, queries about the psychology program. We have a very good track record as well of students going on from our honors program into masters, masters in research, psychology, counseling, even educational psychology if they have a, a PGCE already. Um, so we've developed a good reputation and lots of other universities, we engage with lots of other universities. We have practical um, components to our training as well. We have field work and we have b site practicums which allows you to actually get the, the, the training and experience work-related training. So I think we have a very exciting program and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much, Geraldine. Of course, one of the wonderful things uh, from where I sit within the organization um, is to actually see how, you know, um, various disciplines and fields of study influences, uh, influence one another, you know, so you know, you would find business studies, uh, some of the entrepreneurial skills or accounting actually becoming a support function to, to psychologists and counselors in, in their training and, and how sociological perspectives feed into community psychology type of perspectives that you actually work in your field. So one of the actual, the great benefits of what uh, Geraldine relates around uh, you, you know, stepping out and actually being able to do the work is the fact that you have sort of an holistic space in which you can grow and develop. Thanks, Geraldine. I really appreciate that. Um, so I wanted to ask Peter. Peter, uh, Peter Pedersen uh, heads up our education department. 
um, where we have two strong programs. We're in the process of accrediting a series of other masters and PhD programs, but that's that's future music. Um, Peter, uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, you uh, you also a senior education education specialist. What's your interest in the field, and and what do our students gain from doing uh, doing their studies with with you? Thank you, Rudy. Um, yes, my name is Peter Pedersen, and I'm HOD of the Education Department. Uh, it's one. Of, it is the biggest department in Cornerstone, um, and it's uh, the great thing about it is that we're not only learning to change the world, but we are learning how to change the world at a very very early stage uh, of develop of, of uh, development in terms of teaching. Um, in the education department, we uh, present two programs, the PGCE, uh, Postgraduate Certificate in Education in Foundation Phase, which is for grades R to grade three, and then also the Intermediate Phase, uh, which is uh, from grade four to grade six. And these two programs are the ones that we are running currently. And our students are people who have previously got a three-year degree and now have, uh, have, and now have the, the urge or the want to go teaching. And the, the example I often repeat is that of a um, BSc students uh, who uh, graduated maybe up to 10 years ago as civil engineers and now after 10 years of getting dust and, and um, wind and sun and all of that, they now want a change of direction. So they decided to come and do the PGCE. Um, qualification. Now, that, that is an example of the type of uh, student that we would have. Uh, um, and our students are, are such, uh, scattered throughout the world. We've got uh, students, a large number of our students are from South Africa, obviously, and spread throughout South Africa. Uh, but also we have students overseas in China, in Korea. Um, we've got students in, uh, we've Sorry, we have had students in New Zealand, in Canada, there's students in Europe, uh, in Britain, all over. And, and we have students of different age groups as well. Students who have just quali recently qualified with a degree. And then there's also been those students who are in their 50s who suddenly decided no, now is the time to change the world and they were going to come back into teaching as well. Um, what is very important about our program is that we are 100% online. Everything, uh, all our uh, uh, communications are online. We, on Monday evenings, we run tutorials. Uh, and I see there is a question there about how do students adapt to remote learning. Uh, and I can just say that from our perspective at the education department, our students have really been, um, uh, been been fantastic with the learning, with the online, and have really enjoyed that as well. And so the tutorials are presented on Monday evenings. They are recorded. Uh, those students who can't make it to the live tutorial can watch it at a, a later stage and then connect uh, with the lecturers by email or by uh, telephonic means. Um, and ask questions of them as well. So yes, the teaching is a very important um, profession. And um, I would urge those people who think that they could make good teachers, who think that uh, they can answer the question, what motivates you to become a teacher, then go ahead and do it. Contact the advisors and find out for more information from them. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you, Peter. One of the interesting things that uh, that uh, Peter and his and his team uh, done with the PDC is to actually um, require of our students that when they do practicums, when they have to go and teach in schools, you know, to gain practical experience, 
uh, that we actually require of, of our students to, to teach in, in three different schools in different communities. So that there's really a breadth of experience in terms of the, the diverse types of schools that, that uh, teachers engage with. So you can't just do one type of school in one type of community. You actually have to become a teacher that can really teach across uh, the lengths and breadth of our country. So Peter, thank you very much for introducing uh, introducing uh, your program and the work you that you're doing, and of course the feedback on on all our departments work as is yours so is really great feedback. So um, one of the oldest uh, departments at Cornerstone um, uh, is the Department of Theology and Ethics. Um, Cornerstone actually had had been initiated as as an institution that focuses on theological training. Um, at a time in the 1970s that uh, when, uh, when uh, black students simply could not access higher education um, uh, you know, as white students could and white students and black students could not study together. And so what had happened is on the Cape Flats, uh, um, Cornerstone was initiated, started, launched um, and, uh, and black and white students could study together theology. Um, and so that is part of our, of our core identity and how we've become an institution that focuses on changing the world, uh, presenting a, a different vision of what could be real for, for, for a people of one society as, as for many societies. So at this stage, our, our, our departmental leader for theology and ethics um, is Jakob. Um, and Jakob, I would not, you know, would you please introduce yourself? Jakob uh, has a very interesting focus in theology. And, uh, and uh, so Jakob, what do you, what's your focus? What's your interest in the field? And, uh, and what, what do we want to do with our students? What do they gain when they study theology with us? Hi, Rudy. Yeah, so like you say, theology is 50 years old this year, which shows that we are also a resilient organization. You know that we've been enduring a lot of upheavals and COVID-19 is also one of the major upheavals that we will survive. Um, and then um, my own research um, focus, I work in a field called theological anthropology, which uh, is wonderful that you can work between disciplines. So you just don't work in theology. You also work with uh, psychology, sociology, cognitive science. And the idea there is, you know, basically the question, what does it mean to be a human being and how do we flourish as human beings? And I think that is one of the attractive uh, uh, sides of doing a degree in theology at Cornerstone is the interdisciplinary nature of what we do from the first year. You know? uh, so it's not just theology, it's either theology in our BA program combined with psychology or sociology community development. Um, my own, the reason that I got involved with Cornerstone is its focus on social, social justice. And I think with the current COVID pandemic, it just highlighted, you know, the, the social challenges in our societies in South Africa, but also worldwide. Uh, and of course, one of the biggest challenges are the, the huge discrepancy between rich and poor in countries. And we see it very differently in South Africa, but also in other countries. Um, and um, that is why uh, in our theology course, we want to sharpen the focus on public theology and then um, specifically more in a later stage at urban theology, so that what you typically encounter in urban environments like uh, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Nairobi, Lagos, uh, that you can uh, work towards a more just, a more peaceful uh, society where you promote human dignity. Um, so that will be our focus. Um, we have uh, a lot of, I've heard it a lot of times from colleagues in, at, at other universities that they say we like the Cornerstone students because we like their values. And uh, perhaps, Rudy, you can talk a bit more about that, about the general education program where we want to install a certain set of values in our students uh, from the first year. Um, and um, the idea then is to do theology, not just to learn theology, but to do theology in your communities. And we have um, the BA uh, theology, uh, then we have a BTH in theology with a focus on Christian ministry um, and then a BTH in community development. Um, 
So the challenge for us uh, and for our students is to do theology on the edge. You know, to meet people where they are in communities, in distressed communities, uh, whether it's homeless, issues around homelessness, whether it's issues around gender uh, justice, uh, uh, all the ills or the tendencies in society that we see aggravated now more, you know, something like gender-based violence, for example. How would you minister to that? And what practical differences do you make in your community and in your society? Um, so, uh, yes, so in a, in a certain way, theology is the corner of Cornerstone, you know, being the oldest, uh, be, well, being the founder of theology. But since then, those uh, the organization has evolved to a more inclusive um, organization. And interestingly, theology itself, we have a, very, a, a diverse set of students and lecturers. So we've got lecturers from diverse denominational backgrounds, Roman Catholic, Baptist, Evangelical, Dutch Reformed. And that's also reflected in our students. Um, that we have people from different churches. Uh, of course, we are a Christian faculty um, with an openness to dialogue with other faith communities. Um, yes, really, I think that is for the moment what I can say. No, no, thank you very much, Jacob. It's Jacob Meiring, by the way. So <laughs> I don't think I actually, you know, uh, uh, offered your, your, your second name. But um, thank you, Jacob. Yeah, it's, it's true what Jacob says that um, part of, 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 of what, what we think we, we offer unique to our students um, has to do on the one hand with sort of the top notch scholarship in particular fields. So, you know, my colleagues around the table here are really, you know, their humility is encouraging, but they, they won't share their own achievements in terms of, you know, leading in their fields their own research projects, their own writing and so forth. Um, and, and that bears witness for me, you know, um, as part of the team that what matters for us in actual fact is the content of our work. So, and the integrity of our work. So uh, we would not talk about ethics if we do not hold ourselves accountable to a set of, to a set of values. But one of the ways that we translate, you know, the spirit of our institution, our commitment to, to teaching values as much as professional practice, as much as a focus on really changing the world, field work, if you will, is by actually requiring students who enroll for our programs to participate in a core set of modules. It means that if you enroll for a BA program, uh, there will be five modules in your first semester and the second semester that you are required to do, irrespective of what sort of major you're, you're, you're enrolled, enrolled for. And we call that group of modules or courses, we call the general education program. And there we engage and introduce you to themes such as history, African and South African history. We introduce you to philosophical thinking, to worldviews uh, and how, how that functions within society. We introduce you to economics and entrepreneurship. We introduce you, introduce you to group studies and diversity. And so, and so there's a, a set of, of and, and so what we believe is that if you, if we as an institution want to support you and guide you in becoming a change leader in society, in your household, in your community, um, in your region, in your travels abroad, um, that you actually have to, you know, be engaged in a certain core set of values and perspectives of yourself. And that has to do with what we call your agency, um, your, your skill, your self-belief, your in interconnectedness with other people to actually facilitate change. So for us studies, um, it's not about you being a theorist in our view, what you theorize about the academic stuff that you learn and that you get your qualification for only has one purpose, and that is to change the world around you uh, for the better. Um, so our focus is on what happens in real life. Um, and so for what we call work integrated learning is a big part of our programs. Um, it means that there's certain parts of your program you know, whether it's psychology or business or community development or so, 
that you are expected to spend time in a local community to do a project, write it up, assess it and learn from the experience. So practical work is a major part of, of what we do, as I've also shared with you in terms of, in terms of education. So, um, and if you engage and you and connect with our advisors, they'll be able to indicate to you how we go about that in detail with each of the programs. One of the questions that Elizabeth Pluta had, uh, had, uh, had, you know, asked uh, in, you know, on the social media um, pages is an actual fact how our students and lecture lecturers at, had um, adjusted to the whole move to remote learning. Now, it's a big thing, of course. Uh, in the country, we use different terminologies for what's going on in higher education now. You know, your decision to either enroll for a, a you know, for a full-on qualification at an institution such as Cornerstone, or rather do a quick short course somewhere that doesn't have any credit or maybe enroll, that decision to a large extent has to do with how comfortable you are to, to study uh, in the current environment that we have, which is online. In, in our country, we talk about remote learning, and then we normally refer to students who would normally study on campus, who would now focus only on using technology to study. Then we would have a group of students that we would call online students, which in our case, for instance, in education, we only have online programs. Um, and, um, and, but they well versed in teaching what we would call sort of remote, if you will, online platforms. And then of course you have the term that you call multimodal. It simply is a formal, you know, reference to say that we, we can cut and paste different methods as long as we're able to deliver a quality program that help you become the professional you want to be and so forth. But, you know, all of that comes together to the point that students need support to be comfortable to learn and 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 gain the qualification remotely in 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 electronic sort of format essentially. So what we've done is we've actually um, developed a a set of resources that students and staff lecturers can access on you know, how do you optimize the online learning platform that we already have available for you. Uh, our platform we call Funda, almost like a fountain of knowledge. Um, but our Funda platform um, we, we use to you know, upload uh, presentations, videos, chat stuff. We have um, you know, forum discussions in person. We have you know, blue, blue button like this live streaming and so forth. There's a number of programs that we use on this platform. And often what's missing is that students and lecturers, both who normally engage on campus, aren't comfortable to use all of the functions that such a platform uh, provides you with. And so our resources to our students actually is about, you know, using, using that platform. And then what we've done is with our online learning and teaching uh, team, which you know is a team with people that specialize in how do you actually teach online how do you learn independently almost on an online forum um that offers support so we have actual people that would connect with students and and help them and then our third sort of area of of, of support is that through our student development and support department we actually give students calls we call a student and say are you struggling how are you doing and so forth so uh, at this stage, um, it seems that our, you know, support function to our students have, have ensured that most of our students have made the transition fairly well. Our academic program has continued as per normal. Our lecturers are, you know, continuing with the program, so we've not interrupted. Uh, you might say it's been a little bit easier for us because our institution is, is smaller than, you know, the bigger public institutions. But for us, that's a strength of who we are. We, 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 we value the real relationships between lecturers and students. We want our students to not only know each other, but also to know the lecturers, their teachers well. Um, for our teachers, our lecturers, that matters because, you know, people can say we care, but we really do. Your lecturers know your name. They get to know your story. And, and the reason for that is that in our perspective, the real success of your studies is who you become. Um, and 
for teachers to guide you in that process of becoming more human, um, we need to know you and you need to know us. So um, to give you a sense, it's a broader conversation around how you actually support students and, and lecturers to make the transition to remote. But it's been going quite well. And um, just one thing I want to touch on, and then I'll open to, to my colleagues to maybe comment as well as they want to. Um, you know, when, when you say you want to come and study at a higher education institution, then you would normally say, man, I want my qualification because my qualification would give me employment. You know, it would give me, you know, the credentials to actually enter my profession and get to work. And that's true. And, and we also have share that focus and, and, uh, and we really work hard to, you know, to correct our mistakes, to do better in what we do well. And so make sure that we offer to our students the quality engagement that they deserve. Um, but there's another side to, to what happens in higher education and which we also take quite serious, which, which is about who you become as a citizen of a country and we become as an individual that engages life around you. As a citizen of a country, we want to help you understand that you continuously have the opportunity to reflect on, on the world around you, whether it's in terms of social justice questions, whether it's in terms of access questions, you know, solving you know, poverty in terms of access to you know, food security, or whatever it might be. Um, but how, your responsibility and engagement with the people around you. We think that's an important part of being human. And so apart from you becoming a specialist professionally, we want you to become a leader because you care about people around you and how life, you know, comes. And, and then, you know, as a last uh, third one on that is, it means that you have to become as an individual, someone that, that reflects on the world and then acts on it at the same time in sort of theoretical language we would call that the praxis of living you know to have to be practical and to also reflect so um so that's why field work is such an important thing for us is because we say that you know to be a scholar a, you know an academic that only reflect on the world but not work to change it so our mind you know renders academics a little bit you know ineffective and to be somewhat simply goes ahead and simply works without reflecting on how you go about doing that also puts limitations to what you can achieve to change the world. So for us, it is about doing both at the same time. And we want ourselves as much as you to become people that do that. And of course, that doesn't happen in a day. It is a process of maturing over time. So in whichever field you study, whether you're doing psychology with Geraldine and her team, were you doing sort of theology with Jakob and his team or with Tulani business studies with his team? Uh, of course, we also have media studies as a field that you can specialize in. Um, whether you're doing, you know, education with Peter and his team and, you know, um, uh, uh, sociology and media development with uh, Enrieta and the team. All of these will help you become a professional, recognized in your field but we will push you also to become someone that takes responsibility for our society and also become a reflective practitioner uh, or then a practicing, a practicing reflector. <laughs> but that's part of, of, of what we try and achieve with our students. You'll gain more than simply your qualification. Um, so colleagues, let's, let, me, let me open it up. Um, Henrietta, you know, in terms of, um, uh, you know, uh, your reading of what happens at Cornerstone and what students will walk away with, any last comments from your side? Technology. Yes, I would like to respond to the um, the question the student had or the, the potential student had about the, the transition from contact to remote. It's been a very interesting journey for our students. So the fact that we are in regular contact, first of all, we have a good um, student support uh, student services support system, um, the weekly tutorials has, has ri richly contributed to students feeling that they are actually still in class. I have, I'm, I'm actually about to go and teach in a minute. Um, and this week, the students said to me at the end of, of their first lecture for this week, 
And they said to me, Henrietta, you know, it feels like I'm in class. So we, we, are, we are animated in, in our delivery. We, are, we, we, we imagine our students being in front of us. And it, it, it has really helped our students to navigate the space from contact to, to online learning. And in the same way, when our, our online students join us in the beginning of their studies, it's a similar kind of sentiment um, that, that we experience from our students. So that's my two pennies worth. Thank you, Inrietta. And of course, Inrietta, we know you have to go and teach now. So if you have to leave the meeting, you, you're most welcome. And thank you for your contribution. Uh, well appreciated. So you're welcome to, to step out uh, when you have to. So we wish you well. Um, to Lani, from your side, any additional comments as we, as we have to begin to, to wrap up? Thanks, Rudy. Um, I'll, try, I'll try and be quick, just uh, being cognizant of, of time. Um, I think it's, it's been a very difficult period for, um, for students and lecturers alike. But uh, as Henrietta also also uh, mentioned, we've um, we've as an institution, having noticed that first of all, uh, what we've done is also just made sure that um, uh, our at risk students have the resources to um, to operate online. Uh, I think maybe the our current size allows us to do that to ensure that they have uh, devices to operate online. So we we've actually. Um, purchased devices and made sure that uh, they were couriered to, to, to students who, who raised their hand to say, look, I'm, I'm struggling with this. Um, we are very aware that there are issues of, of, um, of uh, bandwidth of data that, that subsequently we cannot uh, solve everyone's problem, but we've, we've, we've taken a step to say we are trying to, to engage it that way. Um, lecturers in my department specifically, we, we hold weekly uh, tutorials. Uh, I've, I have lecturers who have gone as far as uh, uh, setting up the uh, WhatsApp communication uh, link to ensure that uh, they are always continually in, in, in touch with students. Um, so so we, we are trying to, to operate and take taking note that the what's being called normal is very abnormal at this, at this particular point in time, but trying to, to, to ensure that we, we do the best we can and offer um, as high a quality as we possibly can under the conditions. Um, I think uh, that also answers a question that was, that was asked by a, uh, a gentleman who asked on the interaction with the short courses. So I'll just briefly speak on the, the, the project management that is run for my department that, um, uh, the, what the, they are weekly interactions, um, and that particular lecture is also linked up on WhatsApp, and the, the conversations are at that level in, in terms of, of project planning and project building. So, um, so we try to keep it as interactive as, as possible, taking into consideration the, the times we are in. Uh, thanks, thanks, Rudy. Thank you, Kalani. Appreciate it. I wonder if I could ask Geraldine to just respond. There's a few questions regarding uh, the BSAC equivalent program um, and or the you know BA honors uh, program and and uh, whether we're continuing with that and um, and so forth. I'm not sure. Have you seen the question, Geraldine? Would you speak to that program specifically, please? Okay, so just in terms of the first question, we are still running with the BSAC equivalent program. Um, there is some word about it ending um, in 2023. It all depends on the HPCSA and reaccreditation, but for now we are still running with the BSAC equivalent. Yes, you can get credit, some credit accumulation and transfer. Um, we, depending on what modules you did in your honors, we allow some transfer of that credits. Um, and we only accept 20 students for the honors for the BSAC equivalent. In terms of the BSAC equivalent, as well as the honors program. So we've had students accepted for masters, UWC, UCT, Rhodes, UPE, um, UJ, even overseas universities for certain masters programs as well. So we, um, Stellenbosch University as well. There are times where we do need to um, communicate with universities around what our qualification entails. But to a large extent, our students have been quite successful in applying for master's programs, and they've even been top students in the master's programs that they have um, been a part of. Yeah. All right. 
Thank you, Geraldine. Maybe just to indicate uh, if, if, if friends aren't aware, uh, normally what you do with uh, credit transfers and so credit accumulation is that you would have uh, uh, agreements between institutions uh, where the comparison of publications are being done already. So to a large extent, you know, the question would be what institutions do we have, you know, agreements with? So, so most of the institutions that you can actually go and study with, we do. So, um, yeah, um, and if there's an institution that you would like to study with, uh, following studies with Cornerstone, we're happy to uh, engage with such an institution and facilitate that you're able to do so. So uh, there's no limit to what you can achieve. It's simply what energy you put into it, and, and we work with you on that. But well, we, we have to begin to finish up, so I just want to give Jakob and Peter a, a quick opportunity to say a last word, and then I want to hand um, and invite... Uh, one of our colleagues um, uh, to maybe share another word, and then we and we repeat with the conversation. So, so uh, Jakob and then Peter. Yes, I uh, just want to mention that most of our modules at this stage is also online, uh, because we also attract the older students that are already involved with church communities or with NGOs. So for them, this is the ideal opportunity to keep on working where they are and to continue their studies. Um, and many of our students has moved on to other universities to do a, a, a master's and doctorate and are also lecturing at other universities. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Jakob. Peter? Yes, just to people out there who are listening, um, yeah, the studying teaching practice at uh, Cornerstone is a real possibility no matter where you are. Uh, we do it as I said, percent online and this page uh only presenting the two PGC modules. Um, but the future does look bright for a whole lot of other education qualifications still to come from next year onwards. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Peter. Um so just as a last word from my side, you might find it interesting that um uh we we uh uh, moving to a new campus from the second semester onwards. That campus is in Sunningdale, uh, you know, uh, just on the coast almost. Um, um, and um, and uh, it's looking a very exciting campus, uh, very modern, updated and so forth. Um, and uh, if all goes well with the lockdown and all of that, we will most likely start our new programs for the second semester on, on our new campus. Um, but um, what's our expectation for the future? Uh, you, you may know that the Minister of Higher Education and Training, uh, Vladimir Zamande, had uh, last week announced that their directive to higher education institutions in the country is to actually see the year out uh, in the remote learning um, and to find creative solutions for themselves in terms of how they complete, uh, how they complete uh, um, uh, you know, specifically practical parts of programs um, uh, uh, during the rest of the year. So in the same vein, most likely um, only, we'll only do full campus programs again uh, from the start of uh, the new year, 2021, uh, which in actual fact is the, the actual date of when we will occupy the new campus. Um, we'll do some of the online programs taught from that campus from the second semester onwards, but full campus programs in 2021. Um, so for the rest of the year, we'll be at a remote year and that goes for all institutions. Um, and, and so the opportunity of this is to see how we can actually um, uh, teach ourselves, study independently, and that we have real partnerships between you and our teams to get that done. I want to introduce Adam Spires. Adam is uh, heads up our uh, our marketing, advertising. You know, he tells our story best, but he has some good news in terms of. Our I do. I, I try my best to head up, Rudy. So, Adam, over to you, man. Thanks, Rudy. Really appreciate it, and, and thank you for letting me join right at the right at the end. It's great. Um, you know, I, I appreciate what everyone said here. It's really it's really enlightening, and one of the one of the things I wanted to share was really just twofold is that there is specific challenges that people face 
specifically within this virtual open day, people are, are talking about finances, the ability to be able to study. They get stuck in this, this cycle of, I want to earn more money. I want to further myself. But in order to do that, I need to upskill myself. But in order to do that, I need to have more finances. But in order to do that, I need to upskill myself. But in order, And so they work in this cylindrical kind of place where they're just stuck in this, this cycle. But what Cornerstone is really aiming to do is help them break that. And we have some super exciting um, uh, breakthroughs, I guess you could say, and the ability to help people get um, financial answers when they think that they might not be able to afford an education, a quality education. We have partnered with um, some specific platforms that allow us to spread people's um, kind of net far and wide. Um, in other words, I need money to, 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 to further my education. Let us help you um, gain that um, kind of student loan, whether it be a student loan or if you qualify a bursary. And we actually hold your hand and walk you through that process to be able to do that. Um, we, uh, we, we approach all the major banks. We, we find the best interest rates. And this is all done through partners that we have, that we have recently partnered with. So we don't want finances to be a barrier to education anymore. We want them to have the ability to get the most affordable financing option in the country, which is student financing um, and, and, and help them bring them through and bridge that gap between really what is theory and actually what is reality. Um, and so with that said, we're out of time, but thank you for letting me jump in at the end as almost kind of like a guest speaker yeah. today and you're with my crazy lockdown hair and my crazy lockdown beard and it's been it's been a great time. Thank you, guys. Uh, but we 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 love your back screen, uh, Adam. You know, uh, uh, cornerstone. So uh, one of the one of the running jokes uh, that we share as a team when we when we meet uh, uh, on these formats is that we see how many of us would sit in exactly the same room at exactly the same position when we meet. So uh, this is what we look like when we meet <laughs> at the current uh, environment. So and and I will tell you this, Rudy. Yeah. The amount of passion, and this is for those who are watching, who are considering with Cornerstone. I, I'm not a salesy kind of guy, but the amount of passion that's involved in this panel right here that I see in front of me is, is unbelievable. And the, the real secret is to prepare people for what the reality is out there. They can come, they can study, they can learn the theory. But there's an experience, a wealth of experience right in front of me that has been there and done that and knows how to prepare those people. So it really is that phrase of bridging the gap between theory and reality. Um, and, and so that's why I'm, I'm excited to be part of this. And thank you for allowing me to share my two cents with. Adam, that's great, that's great. So what we would like is to share our passion for changing the world by studying it with you. And so we would like to ask and invite you and encourage you and say, do us the favor. Put down, you know, click the link, you know, ask more questions, get the information, no matter how simple you think your question might be. Ask the question. We'd like to sort of, you know, be part of the conversation, even if the end, you want to for the moment study elsewhere, you know, we'll welcome you back because we know you'll miss us. So. You know, come on, ask the questions and let's get going. But thank you very much for joining us. It's been wonderful. Thank you for the team for making inputs. Adam, thanks, man. And so we hope to see you, you. Uh, shortly, either virtual or on campus. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone who's joined. Thank you very much, guys.